Different rulers, known as Subedars, have administered this region at different times since the emergence of Mughal rule in Bengal. In 1740, Subedar of Bihar, Nawab Ali Wardi Khan, ousted Subedar Sarfaraz Khan to become the ruler of Bengal in a bloodless coup. After the demise of Ali Wardi Khan, his nephew Siraj Uddala got into the seat of power to rule Bengal, Bihar and Orissa. But soon, the British merchants forming East India Company started business and gradually seized the political power in Bengal, trading on the weakness of young Nawab, who became a victim of conspiracy by members of his cabinet and the British merchants. In an unequal war on June 23, 1757, at Plassey, Nawab Siraj ud was defeated and killed by the British force led by Lord Clive. Mir Zafar, the chief of the Nawab's force, betrayed Siraj ud and Bengal lost its freedom. <laughs> The British rule continued for 200 years in India. Then the history of struggle for the freedom of India is long and eventful. Indian leaders like Mahatma Gandhi could feel the pulse of the people who were cherishing the dream of freedom. Mahatma Gandhi was not willing to divide the country on the basis of two-nation theory, which meant two separate states, one for Hindus and another for Muslims. Gandhiji sought cooperation from Muhammad Ali Jinnah. On September 9 in 1944, Gandhiji went to Jinnah's house in Delhi. They continued discussions for 18 days to stop the division of India. But Muslim League leaders appeared adamant about a separate state for Muslims. At this time in March 1946, a delegation of the then ruling Labour Party in Britain came down to Delhi for discussions on independence of India. They held discussions with Gandhiji, Muhammad Ali Jinnah and other prominent leaders. As part of the continuation of the discussions, a historic conference was held at Simla. It was attended by renowned Indian leaders like Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, Jawaharlal Nehru, Abdul Ghaffar Khan and Sardar Ballav Bhai Patel. They exchanged views on the proposed independence and decided to form an interim government. But there also, leaders of the Congress Party and the Muslim League failed to reach consensus. As a result, on May 12, the meeting broke down. To stop the formation of the interim government, Muslim League leader Muhammad Ali Jinnah declared 16th August a direct action day. The Congress Party gave a counter call to resist the Muslim League program. This resulted in a serious riot between Hindus and Muslims. The riot spread from Calcutta to Noakhali and other places of Bengal. Tripura and Punjab also came under the mischief of the riot. To stop it, Gandhiji went on hunger strike and then decided to visit the riot-torn areas. He went to Noakhali. There he tried to convince the people saying Hindus and Muslims are brothers and nobody would benefit from the riot. Things improved after a lot of endeavor by Gandhiji and Muslim League leader Hussain Shahid Sohrawardi. In the meantime came the Second World War, which changed the political scenario throughout India and thus the world. In August 1945, the whole world resented and raised voice against the use of atom bomb by America on Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. At this time on 22nd March 1947, Indian Viceroy Lord Mountbatten invited Mahatma Gandhi to his Delhi residence. There, Gandhiji was told India would be divided into two independent countries. 
Mahatma Gandhi bitterly opposed the idea. So did the Congress. But to avoid bloodshed, the Congress accepted the demand of the Muslim League to divide India. And finally, in August 1947, India was divided into two sovereign countries on the basis of the two-nation theory. Pakistan emerged as an independent country in August 14, 1947. Seventy million people of the then East Pakistan, being away from West Pakistan by more than 1,000 miles, thought they would be able to live in peace and prosperity as Muslims. But soon, their dream was shattered. The Pakistan ruling coterie appeared in its original color to dominate over East Pakistan. To begin with, they tried to take away the language of the Bengalis, Bangla. The then Vice-Chancellor of Aligarh University, Dr. Ziauddin Ahmed proposed that Urdu should be the state language of Pakistan. But great linguist Dr. Muhammad Shohidullah, along with other members of intelligentsia, vehemently opposed this. But on February 23, 1948, in Pakistan Constituent Assembly, Congress Party member Marta Dhrindranath Dotto proposed Bangla as one of the state languages of Pakistan. The Prime Minister of Pakistan, Liaquat Ali, Chief Minister Khaja Nazimuddin, and President of the Constituent Assembly, Molvi Tamiduddin Khan, rejected the proposal. As protest against this, Bengal rose in revolt. On 11th March 1948, a strike call was given all over East Bengal. During the strike, police imposed Section 144 and resorted to large-scale lati charge on students of Dhaka University. The police action, which included arrests, triggered a tense situation. At this time, the then Chief Minister of East Pakistan, Khaja Nazimuddin, came to an understanding with those who were on strike. But the then Governor of Pakistan, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, came to East Pakistan and in separate meetings on 21st and 24th March 1948 declared Declare that Urdu shall be the only state language of Pakistan. This led to a real explosive situation throughout East Bengal. Meanwhile, unknown assailants killed Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan and Khaja Nazimuddin became the Prime Minister of Pakistan. On January 27, 1952, he came to Dhaka and echoed the voice of Muhammad Ali Jinnah that Urdu, only Urdu, would be the state language of Pakistan. The people rose in revolt and called a total strike throughout East Pakistan on February 4. As the strike continued, the budget session of the Provincial Assembly began in Dhaka. Centering this session, procession, meeting and assembly of more than four got banned under Section 144 imposed by the authority. Those who took part in the language movement decided to break 144. According to the decision, they brought out a procession on February 21st from Dhaka University, marching towards the assembly pavon. At 3.30 p.m., police finally fired on them and Shafi, Rafi, Salam, Barkat, Jabbar and many others were killed. On February 22, 1952, the movement took a serious turn. Right at that time, a bill was introduced in the Provincial Assembly demanding that Bangla be given the status of state language. But Bengalis had to wait till February 29, 1956, the day Pakistan's constitution came into force.
In the meantime, Maulana Abdul Hamid Khan Bhashani, a leader of the toiling mass, came to East Bengal from Assam and started anti-Muslim League campaign. In another development, the then leader Hussain Shahid Sohrawardi and young Sheikh Mujib, along with others, formed Awami Muslim League. Gradually, a united front was formed to give it a non-communal colour. The language movement sowed the seed of Bengali nationalism and in continuation of this, in the provincial election in 1954, the United Front, under the leadership of Shere Bangla A.K. Fazlul Haq, Maulana Bhashani and Sorawardi, won a landslide victory. But the centre dismissed the United Front government by imposing governor's rule when it was only 45 days old. In September 1958, the then military ruler, Field Marshal Ayub Khan, declared himself as the head of the Pakistan government. To perpetrate his rule, he changed the constitution and introduced basic democracy. During the period, he unleashed extreme oppression on East Pakistan. In the war of 1965 between Pakistan and India, the government's attitude towards East Pakistan became clear. Despite the fact the maximum revenue used to come from East Pakistan, the province was left defenseless during the war. As a result, East Pakistanis felt that West Pakistan was not at all concerned about the safety and security of East Pakistan. In this situation, Awami League leader Sheikh Mujibur Rahman came up with the historic six-point demand on 23rd March 1966, raising the slogan, Six-point demand is our demand for existence. At the same time, a separate paramilitary force for East Bengal was demanded. The Pakistan government came down heavily on Sheikh Mujib and others who were pleading for the implementation of the six-point demand. Sheikh Mujib was arrested along with others in connection with the so-called Agartala conspiracy case. During the case, Sergeant Zohrul Haq was killed by the Pakistan army while in custody. Another accused, Sergeant Fazlul Haq, was injured. Pakistan army also killed Professor Shamsu Zoha, a teacher of Rajshahi University. All these led to an explosive situation. A top British lawyer, Thomas Williams, with Barrister Amirul Islam and Barrister Modu Ahmed, appeared to defend Sheikh Mujib in the Agartala conspiracy case. Side by side, the people continued their movement against Ayub Khan, who was compelled to withdraw the case on February 22, 1968. He also announced that he would not contest in the next presidential election. Sheikh Mujib, on release from jail, was made a hero and given the honor of Bongobundhu at a mammoth public meeting. By then, the movement against Ayub Khan started picking up. The All-Party Students' Action Committee came up with an 11-point demand which included full regional autonomy for East Pakistan. As a follow-up, a mass movement became a threat to Ayub Khan's existence. On February 20, a student leader, Assad, and many others were killed in police firing. Sheikh Mujib took lead of the movement and came out with a 21-point demand which ultimately took shape of a charter for independence. In this explosive situation, Ayub Khan was compelled to quit giving his last speech on radio. Then came another military ruler, Yahya Khan. He proved to be a dictator of the highest order. The country witnessed extreme oppression, deterioration of law and order, movement and resentment, and dissatisfaction. On 11 November 1969, a severe cyclone hit the coastal belt of East Pakistan and the death toll ran into tens of thousands. The Pakistan rulers remained indifferent over the loss of life and property in the cyclone. The people of East Pakistan finally decided to severe relations with West Pakistan and their feelings were reflected in December 1970's general election. Out of 169 seats in East Pakistan, Awami League secured 167 seats, a majority in the 300-seat National Assembly. Yahya Khan congratulated Sheikh Mujib on his landslide victory and started calling him future Prime Minister.
On 3rd June 1971, Sheikh Mujib addressed the nation outlining his future plan and program and highlighting the disparity between West Pakistan and East Pakistan. आयुक्त खाने रामोले क्लास जो भी बड़ा वाला बुरी वाला देश जवाहर है से वही बुरी वाला देश क्लास के जो भी करेंगे जरा जो भी ही निकिशोक तादरे मुद्दे जो भी बिरी करा होगे भविष्य ते क्लास लैंड और बोर लोग देश जवाहर होगे ना गुरी दर मुद्दे भाग करा होगे अमित जानी जैसे दर मुद्दे बेकार सम आपना आस्था दिए थे, आपना बोर्ड दिए थे, शॉप करा आटा नो बोई थे, सीता माँ के दिए थे ना मैं जानी, ताका कुता है, पौषा कुता है, एक दो शेष करे दिए थे, बेकार, सत्तू लक्षो बेकार आते ही बांग लाते थे, ऐसे जोन लोग कुटी सिल्पर भद्र में, एवं काजेर बंदोबस्त करे, जातो तातारी होए, बेकार समस्या � सिगाल कुकुले में तो आस्था करें ना के मोर में और एक तो कोता बोली हमारे रिफ्यूजी भाई देर का से तेज बहुत चल पड़े ये देश यार रिफ्यूजी ना यह अपना बांग्ला देश यार से ना बांग्ली तेज बहुत चल पड़ जाऊँ तो आज जो हमारे रिफ्यूजी टैक्स दे सात लाख रिफ्यूजी आसाम पश्चिम बंगो बिहार कुछ � आज जरा रिफ्यूजिएशन बांग्लार मार्च संगे मिले जान बांग्लार मार्च संगे एक हुए जान आपने लामा देर भाई ये मात्र भूमि के ग्रहण करे ना बांग्लाली जो अधिकार तो भी आपने अच्छे अधिकार तो हिंदू भाई किश्चन भाई बुद्ध भाई देर बोली तुम्हारे देर ऊपर ऐसे दिन जो उत्तरचार मार्च मार्च हुए थे शे� मुसलमाने जो अधिकार ये जैसे हिंदू किचन पुत्रों से अधिकार ये बांग्लार मार्च के भावे सरकारी काम चाहिए भाई देर बोली दोनों गोनेर खादे में खोते हो बे बोलो करता होले चोर बिना और गरीब के नाखे मुझसे दबाना ये जामरा तो दिख जब बहुत हो ये समस्तो मामला मुकदमा एक उन बुद्धियों तो राजनीति कोर्मि� सर करके उन लोग कर वो ताजे रही मुट्ठे मुक्ति दिवार जन्नो आ न होले कोट दिन राग बे आमरा ही तो मुक्ति दे वो इंशाल्लाह सुमाए बच्चे दिन ना जो है बंगला जो है बंगला जो है बंगला but the leader of Pakistan People's Party Zulfikar Ali Bhutto who had 88 seats in the assembly started conspiracy to delay the handover of power he was not willing to allow any party from outside West Pakistan into state power. Ignoring all democratic norms, he openly threatened that he would not tolerate any party in power without PPP. Only because of his opposition, the first session of National Assembly of Pakistan was called on 3rd March 1971, two months after the election. Finally, that session was also cancelled, putting the whole country in uncertainty. At a historic meeting on March 7, at the racecourse ground of Dhaka, he gave the call for freedom. He said, this time it is a struggle for liberation, it is a struggle for freedom. <laughs> आज दुख को भड़काने तो मोनी है अपने देश सामने हाजिर हुए थे। आज ढाका चौथ ग्राम खुलना राष्ट्रीय रामपुरे अमार भाई रोकते राष्ट्रपाद उम्मीद हुए थे। आज बांग्लादेश मानुष मुक्ति चाहे 
বাংলার মানুষ বাঁচতে চায় বাংলার মানুষ তারা আজ অধিকার চায় কিন্তু দুঃখের বিষয় আজ দুঃখের সঙ্গে বলতে হয় তেইশ বছরের করুণ ইতিহাস বাংলার অত্যাচারের বাংলার মানুষের রক্তের ইতিহাস তেইশ বছরের ইতিহাস মনুষ্য নরনারীর আত্মনাদের ইতিহাস বাংলার ইতিহাস এদেশের মানুষের রক্ত দিয়ে রাজপথ রঙ্গিত করার ইতিহাস উনিশশো বাউন্ন সালে রক্ত দিয়েছি উনিশশো চুয়ান্ন সালে নির্বাচনে জয়লাভ করেও আমরা গদিতে বসতে পারি নাই উনিশশো আঠান্ন সালে আয়ুব খান মাসল্লাদ জারি করে দশ বছর পর্যন্ত আমাদের গোলাম করে রেখেছে উনিশশো সাতাত্তর সালে সায় দফার আন্দোলনে সাতই জুনে আমার ছেলেদের গুলি করে হত্যা করা হয়েছে উনিশশো উনসত্তরে আন্দোলনে আইফ খানের পতন হওয়ার পরে যখন এহিয়া খান সাহেব সরকার নিলেন তিনি বললেন দেশে শাসনতন্ত্র দেবেন গণতন্ত্র দেবেন আমরা মেনে নিলাম কি পেলাম আমরা আমার পয়সা নিয়ে অস্ত্র কিনেছি ওই সূত্র আক্রমণ থেকে দেশকে রক্ষা করার জন্য আর সেই অস্ত্র ব্যবহার হচ্ছে আমার দেশের একজনের দক্ষিণ অস্ত্র মানুষের মধ্যে তার বুকিং পরে হচ্ছে গুলি আমার পঁচিশ তারিখে অ্যাসেম্বলি কল করেছে রক্তের দাগ শুকায় নাই আমি দশ তারিখে বলে দিয়েছি যে ওই শহীদের রক্ত উপর দিয়ে পাড়া দিয়ে আর তিথিতে মজিব রহমান যোগদান করতে পারে না অ্যাসেম্বলি কল করেছেন আমার দাবি মানতে হবে প্রথম সামরিক আইন উদ্ধ করতে হবে সমস্ত সামরিক বাহিনীর লোকদের বেড়াকে ফেরত দিতে হবে যেভাবে হত্যা করা হয়েছে তার তদন্ত করতে হবে আর জনগণের প্রতিনিধির কাছে ক্ষমতা অত্যন্ত করতে হবে তারপরে বিবেচনা করে দেখব আমরা অ্যাসেম্বলিতে বসতে পারব কি পারবো না আমি পুনর্বন্ধুত্ব চাই না আমরা এসে মানুষের অধিকার চাই আর যদি একটা গুলি চলে আর যদি আমার লোকের বা হত্যা করা হয় তোমাদের বল কাছে আমার উন্নত হইল প্রত্যেক ঘরে ঘরে দুঃখ করে তোলো তোমাদের যা কিছু আছে তাই নিয়ে শত্রুর মোকাবেলা করতে হবে এবং জীবনের তরে রাস্তা ঘাট যা যা আছে সবকিছু আমি যদি হুকুম দেবার না পারি তোমরা বন্ধ করে দেবে আমরা যখন মরতে শিখেছি তখন কেউ আমাদের জমাতে পারবে না তোমাদের যা কিছু আছে তাই নিয়ে প্রস্তুত থাকো মনে রাখে বা রক্ত যখন দিয়েছি রক্ত আরও দেব এদেশের মানুষকে মুক্ত করে ছাড়বো ইনশাল্লাহ এবারে সংগ্রাম আমাদের মুক্তির সংগ্রাম এবারে সংগ্রাম স্বাধীনতার সংগ্রাম this is what Sheikh Mujib said to foreign media explaining his stand for power with people's support as the political rulers were playing hide and seek over handing of power. People of East Pakistan were all ready for a fight for independence. Pakistan Army too finalized a blueprint to massacre the Bengali people under the Operation Searchlight. To conduct this heinous military operation, General Tikka Khan took oath as governor of East Pakistan. But the magnitude of massacre on the black night of 25th of March by Pakistan army in Dhaka and other places stunned the whole nation. <laughs> <laughs> 